Hello and welcome back. It's Fiction Friday. I hope you're having an awesome week. Been a busy one for me, but I'm very happy to talk to you today about the epic historical fiction novel World Without End by Ken Follett. This book I gave four out of five stars, but as I am re-examining it, I might want to bump that up to five stars because I really do love this story and not a lot of other books can stand up to its greatness. There is a mini-series I should mention that they made for this because the book is technically a sequel to The Pillars of the Earth, but it is also a standalone novel. So when they made the miniseries, I say they made, when Ridley Scott and his crew made the miniseries for The Pillars of the Earth, they followed it up with the miniseries for World Without End. But you'll notice it's got a completely different cast, and that's because in both the TV miniseries and in the novel, you're dealing with a different generation of people. It's part of the Kingsbridge series, which means it takes place with the town of Kingsbridge and surrounding those events. But it's about 200 years after the end of the Pillars of the Earth. So you've got different characters. But it's really neat to see how the town has developed and how they're dealing with things. Once again, Ken Follett takes real historical events and real historical people, and he mixes them with the fictional characters in the fictional town of Kingsbridge. There's still a lot of concern here, not just with the cathedral, but now we've got a group of nuns that are also living in the Priory. And it's a really interesting political situation because the nuns have control of the spending of the money, and that really upsets the monks. And so there's a whole battle for who's got the money and who controls the power of the purse strings, and that unfolds throughout the book. There's also still the nearby keep us shiring and we've got the noble families and the royalty and we've got war going on but something that really hits home in this book is the situation of the black death the plague and i read the book before our pandemic situation happened for the last year and a half so when i watched the miniseries this week it really hit home with the nuns trying to convince people that really you should wear face coverings to help protect you when you're dealing with people who have the plague so that you don't get sick. My goodness, this was so long ago in the past, and it's scary to think of how an illness can spread so quickly, and so many people can be harmed and get sick and die. Oh, and it can be such a difficulty. So in this book, you do have situations of towns having to isolate themselves, having to decide what to do with the people who get sick with the plague, how to respond to it, how to deal with the unexplainable elements such as some people just not getting sick with it, other people getting sick, and some people dying. So it's a very complicated mess, but now it's become very timely. I think that reading this book now with the idea of what we've been through in the last year and a half could actually be really insightful. I think it could be very timely to revisit this book, or if you haven't read it before, to visit it. Or if you've read the book, to then revisit it through the adaptation of the miniseries, because one way or another, it's going to bring about some emotions. Could be a variety of emotions. And because this is such an epic story that has so many characters dealing with so many situations with politics and economics and family and betrayal and love and all of that, there's a great mixture of everything in there for you to experience and deal with, with the wars and the heartache and everything in between. Ken Follett once again has delivered a masterpiece of a story. And I regret the fact that I have had such a busy reading life that after reading these two books, I've not read more Ken Follett. So I am making a pledge to myself. I've already bought the other two books in the series. There is a third one that comes after this, and Ken Follett also has released a prequel that takes place before The Pillars of the Earth. Though, like I said, they're each a standalone story, and they take place generations apart from one another. So you don't have to read them in a certain order. You don't have to read all of them or one after the other, which is really nice, actually. Well, I guess that's it for today's book talk. I just want to encourage you, check out some epic historical fantasy, I'm sorry, epic historical fiction. I get confused sometimes because it feels like a fantasy novel. When you read those really historical seeming fantasy novels that are low magic, it very much feels like that. But there's never any magic in here. There are people who are very religious and who pray 
pray and hope for miracles and all of that. There's also LGBTQ plus representation, so I won't give spoilers for all of that. It's in the book if you're looking for that kind of diversity. There's a lot to be offered. Anyway, I hope you'll check out the book. Every day is a great day for a book talk. Peace.